out of the game. Hi, I'm Kelsa Dickey, the CEO of the Financial Coach Academy and my financial coaching business, Fiscal Fitness Phoenix. My coaching journey began more than a decade ago with me helping people for free from my dining room table. What was once a little business of mine has grown into a seven-figure company that employs a team of people. My goal is simple, to help you fall more and more in love with financial coaching. I believe financial coaching is the most rewarding way to make a living. If you are an aspiring financial coach or have been coaching for years, I'm here to help you create a business you love that gets your clients massive results. Let's get to it. Hey coach, we have been talking about what you need to know in regard to money and personal finance in order to help your clients as a financial coach. This is the final part of a three-part series. So if you're new here, first of all, welcome, and I'm glad that you're here, but you might want to start with episode 72 to get the full flow of today's topic. Today, I'm going to give you an exercise that will help you determine a course of action to take with your clients. If you are feeling uncertainty around what to do first, second, or third with a client and you are looking for some sort of list, in the previous two episodes, we talked about why a priority order of topics that you should do with every client probably isn't the best approach to take. But then how do you determine what's most important to talk about? That's what I hope to provide you with in today's episode. This exercise can help you hone in on what to prioritize based on the client and not some arbitrary steps that can't possibly work for every client you meet. You can do this exercise with the client or you can use it on your own to help you see the big picture of what your client might be experiencing and thus needing from you. There is one Academy graduate who uses this concept as the main focus during her discovery session with her clients. So that is also a great option for you. I call this concept my financial wheel of life, and I designed it after reading the book OOLA, O-O-L-A, Find Balance in an Unbalanced World. The book was first published in 2012, and I probably read it about then. But now, if you go to their website, oolalife.com, O-O-L-A, life.com, they've got supplements, live events, and all sorts of things. I have no affiliation with them, and I had no idea that it's become what it is today. I just read the book long ago, and I really liked the concepts in it. So I recommend you take a look at it if you're interested. If you aren't familiar with the concept of the wheel of life, it's also called the coaching wheel, the life wheel, or the life balance wheel. And it's a visual representation of the way your life is currently compared to how you would like it to be. It's called the wheel of life because each area of your life is mapped on a circle like the spokes of a wheel. There are tons of representations around the wheel of life, including one by Tony Robbins. So the concept of a wheel of life isn't new, and there are many versions of it in existence, each with a different spin on it. But I want to give credit where credit is due. And what inspired my exercise, my financial wheel of life, was reading the book Ula. Ula is the idea that a more fulfilled and balanced you will make a more balanced family, community, and world, which sounds so lovely, right? Ula is a state of awesomeness where you are balanced and growing in seven key areas of your life. The seven key areas of Ula are fitness, finances, family, field or career, faith, friendships, and fun. They created something called the Ula wheel, which is really just a representation of the wheel of life concept. With the wheel of life and particularly the Ula wheel, you take a look at each facet of your life in those seven areas and essentially rate your satisfaction on a score of one to 10. You're able to see which area of your life needs more attention than others. Just like we can all feel spread thin when it comes to the things in our business that needs our attention, we can all feel that way in life in general too. The wheel of life is a tool that helps you quickly and graphically identify the areas to which you want to devote more energy or attention. For those in the financial coaching mastermind, we do a similar exercise with the nine key areas of business so that each quarter, you know what area needs your attention the most. So that's the general concept. And typically when you see it, finances or money will be one of the categories. Okay. Now, of course, as a financial coach, I wanted to take the concept a step further because one thing I've observed is just how multidimensional people can be in regard to their money. A client can feel 
totally confident and even satisfied in their long-term finances. Maybe they're saving for retirement, maxing out their 401k, funding a Roth IRA, those types of things, while being completely stressed, nervous, and dissatisfied with their short-term finances. Maybe they have a big expense coming up that they don't feel prepared for, or they're in debt and keep juggling it and unable to get out from under it. Maybe they just lost a job, so their finances in the here and now are not great, but long-term, they know they'll be okay. That's just one example of many that I could give you. A business owner can feel great about their personal finances, but overwhelmed or confused about their business finances or vice versa. So I designed the financial wheel of life and you can get the handout that we use every day with our coaching clients by going to financialcoachacademy.com forward slash financial wheel of life. Again, that is financialcoachacademy.com forward slash financial wheel of life. I wanted a way to better gauge how the client felt about the different areas of their finances. So I determined 18 subcategories all geared toward money. You'll see each category numbered, and the idea is that the client is asked to score their level of satisfaction and or confidence in each area, with one being no confidence or totally dissatisfied, and 10 being totally confident or totally satisfied. We'll go through this, but one of the things to know is that as financial coaches, we don't coach on all of these topics. If you remember from the last episode, I talked about how I referred a client to an estate planning attorney. You may also connect the client with a financial advisor or tax professional. You may be able to help the client with their credit, or you might need to refer them to a credit specialist. If you get in your way back machine and go back to episode 21 of this podcast, when I talked about tithing, for example, I mentioned how I might even encourage a client to speak with their spiritual mentor, whoever that might be for them. Remember from last episode that our job is not to be the expert for our clients in all ways, but to help them to make progress. And sometimes we do that by helping them identify what is most important to focus on and then by connecting them with the right person who can help them. So let's go through the various categories of my financial wheel of life. And as, as I bring up each one, sometimes I ask an open-ended question such as, how would you rate your satisfaction when it comes to your family and the role that plays in your financial life? And other times I give more specific prompts or ideas to consider. So I might say something like, I know you told me this once. Does that play a role in how you might score this category? Right. And I'll say something very specific about what the client has shared before. As we discuss each category, we're only talking about how they feel right now, their current state. We're not talking about solutions or ways they could do things differently or better or ways to improve it. We're only discussing their current thoughts and feelings about that category and allowing the client to share with you what's coming up for them. So let's get started. First category is family. A few episodes ago, I interviewed David and we talked about coaching couples. Sometimes a client will come to you with debt and a goal to pay it off, but really the source of the debt is unhealthy communication with a spouse around spending or no assigned responsibilities on who is managing the money or keeping an eye on things. Sometimes this category isn't about a spouse, but a child who needs money often. Sometimes it's pressure to spend that comes from a client's own parents or adult siblings. That's category one. Next, we've got friends. This can be a major source of support or a major source of peer pressure. Do their friends know about their financial goals? Do they seem supportive or do they encourage bad behavior? How does the client feel about their friends and the way they spend their money? Is this healthy because they see their friends as inspiring or does it hold your client back from their own potential? The next category is social, fun, or play. How does the client feel about the role money plays in their overall enjoyment? In our specialty toolkit titled Building Long-Lasting Financial Habits and Smarter Decision-Making, there is a specific concept titled Enjoying Life and Dismantling Limiting Beliefs About Free Activities. And it's perfect for clients who score this area of their money really low. It helps them find ways to enjoy their money with or without spending money, and it can boost their overall satisfaction really quickly. The next category is kids and money. There can be so much guilt wrapped up in what parents are able to provide for their kids. Some people really struggle with budgeting or spending or debt, but the source of that hesitation comes from feeling dissatisfied in this area of their money. How this shows up can change based on the age of the parents and the children. Do they feel confident that they're setting their kids up for success or do they feel dissatisfied in this area of their money? 
Category five is income. What's the client's perspective on their income? Do they feel jaded, like they work so hard and get paid very little and perhaps feel taken advantage of by an employer? Do they feel optimistic about their income potential and what this means for their life overall? This is an area where clients can easily adopt a mindset of this is as good as it's going to get, which can be incredibly demotivating all around. Category six is spending or expenses. Do they feel proud of the spending decisions they make consistently? Do they feel good about the things or like, like they're spending money on, or does it feel really chaotic? Do they have awareness or do they feel clueless? Again, this is their point of view on how they're doing in each of these areas with their money. Category seven is security protection. Some clients will feel worry over, should something happen, would we be okay? And a lot of that can go into this section. We can't control everything, but have we controlled the things that we can? Category eight is professional or career. How do they feel about their career? Is this an important area for them? Do they have an idea of where they would be professionally? And are they on track or falling short of that vision that they had for themselves? Do they feel fairly compensated for the work they do, including benefits? Or do they feel yucky about it? I'll tell you, Michael had a period of time where he hated one of the places where he worked. It was just so toxic and his boss made everyone's life miserable and it affected him so bad. He would come home just so defeated, you guys. If you feel that same way, but are tied to the job due to needing the paycheck, it can feel isolating and vulnerable and very stifling. Again, this can sometimes be the culprit of spending because a person is grasping for any sort of contentment in life. And the other person can hate their job, but leave it at the job, right? They like, it doesn't affect them outside of work. It just depends on the client. Now, these next two, business and personal, like I said, a person can feel great about one, but not the other, which is why we want to score their satisfaction in each. Category 11 is credit. Someone's credit can affect them directly. Maybe it means they pay more for certain things or they can't qualify for something they want, but can also affect them indirectly. It can remind them of past poor decisions, for example, and that can hold them back from financial progress sometimes in the here and now. Category 11 is, or excuse me, 12 is taxes. Do they have a solid foundation for understanding what they pay and how to be strategic? Some people can actually have a lot of, um, I'll say baggage around taxes. They sort of gripe about how much they pay in taxes and it shows in this, um, this, this sort of area where it's like, it impacts their desire or drive to make more money sometimes, but it's really rooted in their feelings towards taxes. I like showing this type of client exactly how much they paid in taxes last year, which you can get from their tax return. There's a line that says total tax liability. You can take that amount and divide it by their income to give them their effective tax rate. It's usually lower than this type of client thinks. And instead of sort of parroting some view on taxes that I swear is like a form of propaganda or something, they realize they're actually paying very little and it can boost their satisfaction very quickly. These next three, short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Again, one person can feel great about one of these and yet totally dissatisfied in the others. That is great awareness to have, both for you, the coach, and the client. Category 16 is the mental area of money. Some coaches start with money mindset in their coaching. And while I don't typically do that, it's simply because my clients don't tend to score this area low. It's not to say they don't have any disempowered thoughts about money, of course, but it's not hugely impactful like it is for some people and possibly some coaches' clients. Both are right because it's probably based on the client. Category 17 is emotional. If you've ever had a client who is doing great financially, like all of the numbers look solid and yet they still feel a certain way, maybe scared, worried, or anxious, they probably score this category low, but have the other categories high. Category 18 is spiritual or charity. And last, but you know, certainly not least, how does the person feel about the impact they're having with their money? Do they wish this was better and it's impacting them that it's not? Are they good with the level that they're contributing, even if in your eyes, it's very little? Those are the 18 categories of finances and my financial wheel of life. If you are meeting with a couple, I would ask each person to score these areas on their own. You'll likely notice that some disagreements come from simply seeing these areas differently. One person feels like it's fine and the other person feels dissatisfied. 
we ask our clients, like I said, to score their satisfaction in each one so that we're able to see the big picture. Where is their weakest link? Could that be the cause of some of the areas that are more obvious, such as spending problems or debt balances or disagreements with their spouse? What if you picked the area that was causing the most dissatisfaction with your client and focused on that in your coaching to start? Then I like to ask, what would make this just one point higher? If you scored your spiritual or charitable area too, what would make it a three for you? How can we go about creating that shift? And we focus on making progress one decision at a time and in one area at a time. Sometimes that means we're referring them to another professional who is an expert in that area, such as an estate planning attorney, but we are coaching them on that step as well. This is where our specialty toolkits can really help. So I just want to plug those quickly in case you aren't aware of what they are. The financial coaching toolkits are truly your coaching concepts that you do with clients during coaching sessions. They act as your toolkit. You see a need in your client and you can pull up one of these concepts to do with them. The advanced concepts toolkit, for example, are all of the topics that focus on enhancing your professional reputation because they are the things where you're likely to work with another expert, a financial advisor, a state planning attorney, CPA, mortgage lender, insurance agency, uh, agent, excuse me, bankruptcy attorney, those types of people. The role you play as the coach and how you talk with your clients about these things are all provided in the advanced specialty toolkit. So if your clients score low, um, in areas such as security protection, taxes, or long-term finances, and it's a consistent thing that you see, and you're not sure how to best support them in these areas as a financial coach, the Advanced Specialty Toolkit would be a great resource for you. Now, if you have a client who scores any of these other areas low, so short-term finances, social fun or play, spending or expenses, mental or emotional, then the specialty toolkit titled Building Long-Lasting Financial Habits and Smarter Decision-Making would be a terrific resource for you and your clients. There are topics for each and every one of these 18 areas inside of the specialty toolkits, and you can check those out by going to financialcoachingtoolkit.com. More than anything, coach, I hope this exercise, my financial wheel of life, helps you to determine a priority order with your clients. I hope this helps you to feel confident in how you customize your coaching so that it is best for the client right in front of you. I give you permission to use this exercise with your own clients, just like I give credit when I have been inspired by someone or something like Ula. I would just simply ask that you do the same for any of the concepts of mine that you use. Simply give me credit as well. Next episode, I'm going to help you to establish your unique value proposition. There is an incredible shift happening in the coaching space right now. Consumers are becoming smarter. They're becoming more discerning, and that creates an opportunity for all of us to meet a higher standard of how we talk about what we do and how we do it. There is no better time to think about your UVP, your unique value proposition, than right now. In next episode, I'm going to help you to do just that. Coaching is all about figuring out what you think of something and how that is impacting how you feel and the actions you take. In order to honor the coaching philosophy, I'd like to end every episode with a question for you to reflect on. The purpose is to deepen your awareness of your thoughts and to help you gain clarity on today's topic. It also creates the opportunity for you to share your thoughts with me and other financial coaches. Let's get the discussion going. I'd love to hear from you. If you are watching on YouTube, drop a comment with your answer to today's question, or you can join the conversation in our free community for financial coaches called Financial Coaches Unite. You can find the link and ask to join in our show notes. Here's your question, coach. How can I use the financial wheel of life to coach my clients and help them make progress financially? How can I use the financial wheel of life to coach my clients and help them make progress financially? I believe financial coaching is the best and most rewarding way to make a living. I truly love what I do. If you're ready to learn and see how to become a profitable, successful financial coach, check us out at financialcoachacademy.com to learn more about our online courses, free trainings, and events. As always, I love hearing from you. If you have any questions for the FCA podcast or to share your thoughts on the reflection question from today's episode, go to financialcoachacademy.com forward slash podcast. And if you love this podcast, hit the thumbs up button on today's episode, subscribe and leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. I'll see you next week, coach. Oh, hey.